Hi, I'm Denise Jagru, and welcome to my web series, The Real Story. These are real stories from real people. These are stories about health and healing, and I hope they inspire and educate you. Today, my guest is Kate Levy. Thank you so much for being here, Kate. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, it's a pleasure. Kate is a former professional show jumping horseback rider. Yes. I got it. Um, Kate's story is the most amazing, inspiring story of resilience mm. that you will ever hear. I promise you, you'll be inspired. You'll also wonder how this woman is physically intact <laughs> sitting here <laughs> after she tells you about the injuries and surgery she's had. She's had an amazing story recovery that she will share with you. So tell us first how you even got started with your love for horses. Well, I think I got the book as a young girl. I uh, was able to go to a barn where I got very minimal, like, formal instruction, but I was able to take care of the horses, feed, mop, water. Was it your water. barn? It was not my place. Um, mm -hmm. It was a place um, not too far away, but not so close to home, um, that a lady was uh, had a, had a career and was running a very small bi uh, horse business off of uh, somebody else's property. Um, this is upstate. Yeah, I mean upstate uh, for city people, <laughs> I guess. In New York, um, just you north know, of the city. Outside of New York City, therefore, uh, <laughs> you know, another land altogether. <laughs> another country. Um, New York. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. So basically, for most of the people <laughs> concerned, perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, completely another world, mm -hmm. uh, farm country, mm -hmm. um, Golden's Bridge, New York, to be exact. And I um, just fell in love with the horses. I would spend all my day there um, taking care of everybody in the barn's horses because actually the, um, the woman who was running the farm had, had some unfortunate personal issues and wasn't really able to be there so much. Um, but I just spent every single minute I had there. Um, so you felt like a connection with the horses, it did. like you were like it a did. horse whisperer. I don't, I don't think I was necessarily a horse whisperer <laughs> yet, but I was developing, mm. you know, horsemanship skills, mm. and I just, I really love their company. I mm. think they're the most amazing. So you amazing were riding animals. then; you weren't just taking care of them. When she was around, I would ride a bit, um, but not on my, not when nobody was there. Mm. Um, but I was also spending a lot of time grooming and just getting basic sense of horse care, um, mm. which, which is interesting that it doesn't always happen in this order. Um, but I think I was lucky that it did. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to lie. I mean, this is a special skill because I do not love horses. I always, anytime I go horseback riding, which has not been often, I always get the horse that has the complex. You know, if, if all the other horses are facing this way, my horse wants to face this way. If all the other horses are going this way, my horse wants to go this way. And I have been oh. thrown from a horse. So it's random that we have something in common because I have been thrown from a horse. And uh, I just, you know, I have to be inspired by you and get back on the horse because I have not gone back on a horse since it's happened two years ago on vacation. And um, I just, you know, I always get the horse that wants to be different. It's always a smaller horse that has the small horse complex and wants yeah. to be like the bigger horses. Uh, and I just, had, I just had a heck of a time like connecting with horses. But so you're very, you're very special. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm not so sure. I mean, the, if the falls become more and more daunting the older we get. Mm -hmm. I think uh, our bodies become somewhat mm -hmm. uh, less breakable or less resilient. Mm -hmm. So um, you started competing? Yeah, eventually. Uh, when on a, on a worldwide, worldwide level, right? Was well, that, that happened later. Um, mm -hmm. You know, after my junior career, um, I had a, a really great horse and yeah, I was able to sort of step into the international arena at a young age and mm -hmm and had some success there too. Mm, is this Olympic level? Um, yeah, I've done Olympic trials. I was an alternate shortlisted for the 2008 Olympics. I, mm. I wasn't part of the gold medal team. Um, 
Mexico, USA. <laughs> but um, it was really an honor to have made it very close. But I've also competed in many World Cup finals and um, Nations Cups and, and so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. those are, you know, comparable mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as far as level. She's a big deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she represents I the wouldn't US of it. I wouldn't <laughs> say that. I, I mean, well, still thank you. She's still thank a big you. deal. Thank she's you. Um, so then the accident happened. The accident happened. What happened? And when was it? It was uh, August 16th of 2007. Mm -hmm. I um, was riding a horse that belonged to a friend um, who uh, the horse had uh, some personality um, issues which we were well aware of, but it was, you know, basically a good horse. Sometimes getting the engine started and, and so on, she, um, you know, was full of shenanigans, I guess. Um, and s uh, when I got on, she um, was, she, she tended, she had a tendency to rear up, which it means that standing on their hind legs, mm -hmm. um, which she began to do. Um, as a rather experienced rider, I didn't, didn't necessarily cause me to fall. Um, and the horse was particularly like staying up for quite a long time. Um, and I was gripping on tight. But she eventually lost her balance, which was completely unexpected, and fell over backwards. Onto uh, you. Onto me, and crushed me, and sort of rolled, not to be gruesome, it sort of rolled on me, mm -hmm. my body, in order to stand up again. Um, in hindsight, I should have bailed <laughs> a lot earlier. But I wasn't able to foresee that she would have lost her balance. I, I assumed that she would eventually come back down onto her front legs. Mm -hmm. So when she fell on you and she rolled on you, what did that do to you? Um, quite a bit of damage, actually. It was, mm. besides being very, very painful, I um, ruptured my spleen and had a bleeding stomach. Um, I also had 17 pelvic fractures. Just pelvic fractures. And then nine complete fractures in my femur. Uh, so it was literally in nine distinct pieces. Um, <laughs> it's just one bone. Uh, femur. Broken ribs, a broken tailbone, a broken pubic bone, and well, s some lost morale, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so what was going through your head? Well, I mean, that was, well, at first a lot of pain, but after um, having survived uh, extensive surgery and, and... Um, How many surgeries did you have? You well, actually many. just one because, um, you know, I should have had, uh, they were planning to have a second, but because I had a bleeding spleen, mm -hmm. um, I had lost too much blood during the first one. So actually when I came out of the first one, there was a few days when I had stopped blood transfusions that I became very, very ill um, because my hemoglobin was at a, a 4 instead of a normal level, which would be a 10. Um, because the surgery, having undergone the surgery with, you know, organs that your internal bleeding is mm -hmm. obviously uh, not ideal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I wasn't actually able to with you know strong enough to mm -hmm. stand more surgeries um, did you have right a away. lot of hardware put in screws plates yes all, all that of the above a, um, a 50 centimeter rod in my femur that connect from my knee to my hip and then screws and plates that connect to my um, hip and pelvis oh my goodness and so you were obviously off your feet for a long time. For a very long time, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, left me a lot of time to think, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess. And did you ever think that you would go back to horseback riding? Um, I hoped very much, but the future was precarious. Um, nobody was sure how well I would how well I would recover at, at first, even being able to walk was not necessarily a given. So mm -hmm. the ability to ever ride again was, you know, 
certainly not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. um, so you went so through a long hard. rehab process, I can only I imagine. I, I mean, I'm a physical therapist, and one of those injuries would take a long time. I mean, one pelvic fracture is really painful, it's hard to weight bear, it's hard to sit with one pelvic fracture, and you had so many. So I can't imagine th the rehab process with not just broken bones and in so many places and so much hardware, but with your organ conditions as well, like ruptured spleen and all that stuff. So I can't imagine how you got through rehab. So what were you thinking when you were in this recovery process? How did, what got um, you through? What got you going got every day? Well, um, I think it's normal to be very sad and there's obviously a grieving mm -hmm. process that one one has to go through. Um, for me, um, I was very lucky that I had this direction and passion in my life, um, but it was also everything and it was, um, you know, it was my life. It was my, in a way, sadly, uh, my sense of self-worth at the time. Um, and now all of a sudden, all my dreams were shattered. Um, you know, life as I knew it was no longer. And, you know, where, you know, how do you, where do you go f from there? So, of course, I was sort of tormented and confused uh, besides being obviously very sad because, you know, to some degree I, I w sort of lost faith. That it, uh, I was a person that thought that if I worked hard and was dedicated and, and passionate and, you know, determined and all those things that that would sort of guarantee success and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And you and don't foresee these crazy accidents, even though, I mean, dealing with an animal is such a, like, um, unpredictable kind of variable that you're working with, right? But, Absolutely. But you felt, I guess, with all of your experience with the horses that you had had some kind of control, you would be able to tame, you know, whatever kind of character the horses had, right? But this one was just kind of a different character put in your path. Yeah, you know, I obviously made mistakes and suffered the consequences, mm -hmm. one, uh, as any rider does. Mm -hmm. And also, there's that element of danger in our sport to a degree that doesn't necessarily exist in all other sports, some, of course. Mm -hmm. So you know that when you get up there that you're willing to take those risks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Were you ever um, like angry towards the horse? No, no, mm -hmm. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I, you know, wished that I could have foreseen it or had done something sooner or I kept asking myself, why didn't I bail? Why didn't I just push myself off? Mm -hmm. You know, hi hindsight's always 20-20. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, but I don't really believe that it's constructive Mm -hmm. to always think about what you should have done because mm -hmm. the reality is that no matter what we have to move forward so you might as well spend more of your time mm -hmm. thinking about what happens next. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of what got you through? You, thought you kept thinking ahead of how you can either redefine yourself or find a new path for yourself or try to find your path back to this world of horse yeah. and riding and racing and stuff like that. I did, I did. I had to reach a lot of resolve in my own mind because mm -hmm. I, I always believe that, you know, there is no such thing as luck. We create our own luck. And that, you know, we make mistakes and we take responsibility and we move forward. But this was a little different. I thought that, you know, luck comes to those who are prepared but on the other side, how do you prepare for something that you can't foresee? Mm -hmm. Such as, you know, sort of a freak 
a freak accident. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was somebody who was controlling and, you know, had determined every single step of my life and where I wanted to be and mm -hmm. so competitive and driven and had all my goals set out mm -hmm. for me. And yes, I had had drawbacks and setbacks and this was certainly not the first. And uh, in horses, as much as a, 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 in any other sport, you have setbacks mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. um, and you, so I, I couldn't understand why, well, you know, I was somebody who rolled with the punches and this was just, you know, a very hard punch, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that I, I thought to myself that, you know, in as much we can't necessarily control everything that happens to us, um, yeah. we can control um, what we do about it. Mm. And wise words. Mm. And um, how we are going to react to it. So, yes, I, I was terribly upset and in pain and couldn't understand, you know, why me? Why did this? Mm. Why did this have to happen? Uh, at, at first, you know, it, 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 you know, you don't really understand, mm -hmm. um, and y you ask yourself, how am I supposed to um, move forward from this? I think one thing that really helped me was that I had to realize that, you know, this could have been a lot worse. Um, it was pretty bad, given what but it could have been worse. actually happened, mm -hmm. I was very lucky. Um, I sure. didn't have any brain injuries. I didn't. I wasn't paralyzed, right. which we didn't know right away. But after I underwent surgery and I had feeling in my toes, that was a huge relief. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a spinal injury besides my tailbone and pubic bone. But so there's a lot of ways to look at it. You know, sure. mm -hmm. it. I wasn't going to be in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. so I was True. incredibly fortunate mm -hmm. um, in this way, and you know I could have died. So, mm -hmm. so you know that you know as much as it's very upsetting, I think it's important also to see the half glass half full, especially mm -hmm. in in times like this. Realistically, but mm -hmm. still half full. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to look at it and see such an intense situation as something positive. Right, because it's just hard to to understand, you know. Mm -hmm. you and why. where are you now in the in the riding world? Are you still dealing with horses now? Um, not. I'm, I'm managing my farm and the business, but I've uh, I retired in 2012 mm -hmm. um, from the, the sport and dealing horses and training and mm -hmm. and all. Of all of that. Um, but at the time of my accident, I, you know, it was all I knew. Mm -hmm. And I also thought to myself that, you know, what if I had died or what if I um, would never be able to walk again or it was a para or even quadriplegic because that could have easily been the outcome of this too. Um, and I thought about, you know, my life and what I had achieved and what I, who I was and what I'd done. And I was content that I was a, a good person with um, virtues and values and principles. But I um, don't think that I was the person who I really wanted to be yet. Had I left in some way, I, I didn't, I, you know, everything I did was based on my own personal success. Yes, of course, I had great teammates and support that, you know, my success also um, made them very happy and happy for me and, and that, you know, and a, str a strong family support and friends. But, you know, I, I realized that, you know, there were bigger things because I still wasn't sure that I would be able to ride again mm -hmm. um, or what I would be able to do. but. There are more important things, and being a successful person comes in so many ways. It's not about um, how many times you've won, and there's so much more. I, I don't think that I had realized that until this 
until that moment, you know, I had this sort of, you know, the light. <laughs> uh, well, I had a lot of times to think, so mm -hmm. I guess there was a lot of opportunities for the light to uh, sort of mm -hmm. shine down. But, you know, just it really broadened my perspective mm -hmm. on things. Mm -hmm. And um, so I decided that, you know, the I didn't want the last chapter to have been written. And mm -hmm. I... Um, and in knowing this, and not, and you're talking to somebody who's very type A, by the way, if you, if you guys hadn't realized that already. So not knowing and not being in control was mm -hmm. extremely scary for me. Mm -hmm. But I, I did manage to find control, and I need it. I think we all need that. I think mm. that um, to, a, to a degree, some more than others, obviously. Mm -hmm. For me, I needed... Um, I thought about the fact that, yes, this accident definitely changed me um, in many ways, and many ways for the better, mm -hmm. and changed the way I saw things, and perhaps even made me more cynical in a way. But it also, it was also very, like, awakening and allowed, you know, realized how lucky I was in, in so many ways and um, made me remember that, you know, even though I suffered all this physical damage, um, who I was at the core, my virtues, it didn't take those from me. Mm -hmm. And all the qualities that I had towards my sport, um, like dedication and hard work and being somebody who's a planner and and all those things and you say how can I plan now like what do I plan for mm -hmm. but you can and it's all about how you redirect those qualities mm -hmm. and I feel that at the core I was um, I am a very passionate person and I was very passionate about horses and I still am they'll always be my first love and passion mm -hmm. but we can redirect Mm -hmm. And that comes from our mind and how we want to, you know, face challenges. And I think ultimately we just have to make the decision that mm -hmm. we, we want to get better. Mm -hmm. And you still have all those qualities. Mm -hmm. And so they just are going to be working towards new goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usually I ask my guests to tell a real story because it's the name of the show. But I think that that's Kate's real story. <laughs> being broken into 30 different pieces and then coming back together. Um, so if somebody's going through a setback, whether it be an injury or just some kind of setback in life, what words of advice would you give them to get through? I would say, well, I can give advice as to what works for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you need to set goals. Mm -hmm. You need to have a long-term goal. Um, with the understanding that maybe not everything is going to happen in um, a specific time period and that there will always be bumps along the road. But mm -hmm. obviously in my case, I wasn't sure that, you know, I was good. I was, at the time I was, you know, training for the Olympics and I'd been the highest placed rider in the World Cup um, of 2007. So it looked that I was a real legitimate candidate to be on the US team in 2008. And all of a sudden those dreams are gone. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just what the doctors tell you, you know, maybe tomorrow we'll get you out of bed. Maybe at this point you'll be able to, you know, do this. Eventually we see that you'll be on crutches. So you make those your new goals, even mm -hmm. though they're very small and finite mm -hmm. and not really in the big picture. But you have to decide that you're going to tackle this head on using your strengths, not not your weaknesses. And obviously the fact of being very disheartened and sort of disillusioned um, covers them up, but you have to rediscover them. And, and, th and they're there. Um, they are, mm -hmm. no matter how bad it is. Uh, it's just, you know, it's all about, um, I think, sticking to your goals and saying to yourself, you know, deciding to get better, 
with an open mind. Obviously, in these cases, how much to what extent one will recover is, is not always sure. Okay, mm -hmm. is there anything else you would like to share with our audience before we go? I, um, I guess I'd almost I guess I would just say in closing that um, for all of us who you know find ourselves in a very weak or vulnerable place or that we just don't see ourselves as um, ever overcoming it that you know small goals and, and small successes make a big difference and success comes in so many very different forms it's not linear it's and it is really what you want it to be, what you mm -hmm. make it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and no goal is too small. And um, you have to make the decision not to give up and to, you know, to achieve the, your, your little goals. And eventually, you know, you'll find yourself um, back where you started. I mean, thinking of it in the big picture is very overwhelming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think my best advice to people would be to break it up day by day. Just, just take things day by day. That's, that's brilliant. <laughs> well, I don't know. That was very meaningful, but for sure, yes. especially when you're going through such a recovery process where you can't see the end. Right. You know, and it just seems exactly. so overwhelming. Um, I really admire how you got through this and how you're, like I said, in one piece. And I, I'm a physical therapist, so I've dealt with, I've dealt with so many people going through lots of orthopedic injuries, but not anything close to what you've gone through. So it's amazing that you're here and that you can share with our audience your inspiring story. Thank you so much for having me. I, it was such honor. an honor for it to have no, you. No, the honor is it is mine. Um, I think uh, Kate's story, I hope it has inspired you because it's inspiring to me and I think that if you just listen to her words, you can really get through any kind of setbacks they have in life. Um, it can really apply to anything, not just physical injuries or anything like that, just like setbacks in life. Just take you know everything day by day and set, set your goals. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And uh, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for tuning in and check in next week when we have more real stories about health and healing and more inspiring stories about moving on in life. So thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.